Hey guys, it's Megan Larson and I'm back with another video for you guys today. So I'm really excited about this one. We're going to be talking about social media today and I'm going to share with you guys all the apps that I personally use to promote myself, my business, to get more clients in my chair and how I do everything I do for social media. So I'm going to kind of run through everything and I hope this helps you guys out. I'm also going to be sharing how to gain followers on Instagram, but specifically not just any followers, followers that are going to turn into clients for you or bring you in business and specifically bring you in the high dollar services that you want to be doing more of so that way you are making more money. So if that sounds good, then stay to the end of the video and also make sure you subscribe to this channel because I post new videos every single week. And let me know in the comments below if there's a video that you guys would like me to make, something you've been dying to know, want to know more about, and I'd love to make that video for you. You guys can also find me on Instagram at Megan.Lorson. I have tons and tons of educational posts from social media, how to grow your following. I post formulas. I post hair techniques, how-to videos. So make sure you check it out. There's a lot of really good education on there. So... First, I'm gonna share all my apps that I use. So I have a very short list of apps. And honestly, I'm not, I don't wanna say I'm not super techie because like I love social media, but at the same time, I keep everything super simple and easy, as easy and simple as I can, because I'm already super busy and I'm sure you all are too, and you don't need anything else to make your life harder or take away more time away from other things that you would like to be doing or spending time with family or whatever it is. So the first app that I use, and this is my favorite app, and this is the one I use for making and editing all my videos. And let me tell you guys, if you are new out of cosmetology school, a new stylist, if you guys have been in the industry for years and you want to grow your clientele no matter where you're at, or maybe you want to change your clientele and you want to stop doing less of the low dollar services and more of the high dollar services. So the way you can do that, the quickest way is by video. And that might sound like a big task for some of you and that might sound intimidating for some of you, but it's not as intimidating as you think. Honestly, the, one of the best ways to start learning and taking video is just simply on your Instagram stories. You don't have to worry about making a whole video and editing and how to put it together and this and that. Just simply just taking a little video of your clients before you start the process. So simply what I would do, get my camera up, I've got my client in my chair, and I would just take a quick video. You can talk if you want. Or if you're like an introverted person and you don't like to talk, then guess what? All you have to do is pull out your phone, camera, take a quick video, go all the way around the head. Boom, you can take the sound off, you can keep the sound on, you can add music, whatever you want. And just maybe put a little caption or just put before on your story and then post it. And it's a video. But it's creating movement and it's catching people's attention more than just a picture. And then what you could do if you have an assistant or another hairstylist that works beside you or with you, um, or if you don't, that's fine too. But maybe after you place the foils in someone's hair, then you're going to get another video shot of that and post that and just say whatever you want to say. That way people can see what you're doing. And the more you post that, if you're consistent with posting stories every day, it is so freaking amazing how much traction you can get in just days, weeks, months, if you're consistent with posting video on your story every single day. So this is a great way to start. And then of course, don't forget the after because people are watching your stories and they don't wanna see the before and then not see the after. So make sure you're following through with your stories to the end so people see the before, the middle, maybe they see you doing some techniques and then the foiling when it's done and then make sure they see the after too. That way they can see start to finish. And sometimes I forget or I don't have time to post the after right then and there. So it's okay, just go back later, maybe when you're off work or when you have a little break and then go ahead and upload the after. It doesn't matter when you do it, just make sure you do it. 
Um, so that's a little tip there for starting with video if you're not yet totally comfortable with making and editing videos. And speaking of videos, you guys might notice the quality on this video is a little bit better. I just recently upgraded to a camera for the first time. I've been using my iPhone, you guys, for years. So now I get to have my phone here in case I need it to show you guys stuff. So I upgraded to the Sony Handycam and I'll link down the exact one down below in case anybody else is interested in getting a um, good quality camera. This was recommended to me by one of my really good and amazing um, photography friends. So, so far I've been loving this camera. So if you guys are interested, I'll link it below so you guys can see. Um, okay, so when you get comfortable with taking Instagram stories, the next step is to start taking video on your actual camera on your phone. And this is going to be something that you guys can start posting on your actual Instagram feed. So what I like to use is an app called InShot. It's that one right there. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so it's red. And this is what it looks like when you open it up. And it's got several different options, but all I use is the video option. So you click on the video and then it's gonna give you the option if you have some saved, but you're gonna just click new video. And then all you're gonna do is select the video clips through here that you have taken. So I'll just show you guys, ooh, just kick the camera. Okay, so I'll just show you guys a quick little, um, okay, so let's see. Okay, so this was before of a client I did the other day, then this is her foils during, and then um, the placement I did after, and then I think that's the after maybe. Okay, so we'll just, we've selected all those, and then you're gonna hit the check mark at the bottom, and it's gonna load your videos up onto the InShot app. And then, guys, I keep my editing super simple. Like, I am not super high tech when it comes to editing, and. I don't get super fancy with it. And honestly, you don't either. The more simple, the better. So it's gonna upload like this. Um, but what you're gonna do is go to Canvas and then you're going to select the Instagram ones. I usually do the four, five ratio. Click on that. And then just a little tip do not leave the borders on there. It doesn't look as professional and it doesn't look as catchy to people. So what you're gonna do is hit the check, make sure you're still on the canvas mode. Oh wait, yeah, okay. Actually, you might still need to be up on this screen. So hit canvas and then if when you're still on the canvas thing, you can zoom in and zoom out with this. So what I do is zoom in just enough to cover the edges so you don't get the white edges. That way it looks more custom. And then hit check when you're done. And then if you just tap the bottom, it's gonna show you all three slides that you uploaded. And so I click the second one, do the same thing, hit canvas, just slowly squeeze it to fit the screen, check, and then tap the bottom. Oh, press and hold the bottom and it brings it back to this. And then tap the last screen and do the same thing. Hit canvas and then you're going to size it to the full screen so you don't have the borders. And then when you're done, hit check. And if you get something at the beginning or end of your video that you don't want to be in there, all you have to do is tap on the slides to say, I was talking at the beginning beginning of when I was taking her after shot, I'm just gonna tap on that. And when you tap on that, it's gonna give you these little sliding bars. All you have to do is slide the bars over and it cuts out the beginning part. So if I'm doing something awkward at the beginning of the video, I can cut that out and start it where I want to. Or if the video is a little too long, then I can go to the end of the video and take that little slide bar and cut that out. Um, the app is pretty simple. I, again, I don't do a lot of editing and crazy things, but here you guys can see some of the options. You can add music, which I definitely do usually add music. Um, and InShot has a lot of like royalty-free 
music already downloaded into the app, so anything you choose to use from the InShot app is gonna be totally fine to post on your Instagram and Facebook pages. Um, also, if you are wanting to get into making YouTube videos, there is a YouTube size. Just make sure when you take those videos, they're taking them this way instead of this way. You can also choose a size for Facebook and pretty much any platform. Um, and I believe, actually, I did upgrade this app. I think it's pretty cheap. Um, but the reason I upgraded is because the free version, I believe, has the logo, the InShot logo on the side, and I didn't want that. Um, so that's just a little run through of InShot. If you guys want me to make a more detailed video of how to make videos on InShot, I could literally do a detailed start to finish editing a video for you guys. So anyways, let's move on to the next app. The next app I like to use is called Moldiv. So I will show you guys that one real quick so you can see how it's spelled. So it's this really colorful one right there with the little circles around it. It's called Moldiv. The only thing I use that one for is my side-by-side -side pictures. It's got collages. So I can show like my a before and after picture side-by-side. -side. So I like to use it for that. And then the last app that I use occasionally is Canva which I'm sure some of you may have heard of. It's this little blue app right there. It's called Canva. And um, I'll use this for all kinds of different things, posting things on my Instagram story. Here's what it looks like. And again, you can make it for all platforms depending on the size you want or need. You can make promotions with this for the salon or I mean, it's endless. There's so many different things. They have a lot of already pre-made um, things on there, but then also you can choose to make one from scratch yourself. So that's a really cool app that I like to use also. So moving on to, let's, those are all the apps that I use. They're just, there's three of them. Told you guys I keep it really simple. I don't use a ton of crazy apps and all this stuff, I keep it pretty simple. So now I want to give you guys some tips on growing your following on Instagram. So we did talk briefly about posting on your Instagram stories, which is huge right now. A lot of people are watching stories. So it's super important and I highly recommend to post at least 10 stories a day on your Instagram. And a lot of people might think that's a lot, it's hard for me this, that, whatever, but you know, especially now, I think a lot of stylists are slow in business and they're not getting all the business that they normally get just with everything going on um, with everything right now. So videos and being consistent with posting on your Instagram and your stories is super, super extra important right now to be getting your clients in the door. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, since we have reopened our salon, we closed for two months. I live in Virginia and we reopened. We have been busier than we have ever been before. And our salon is actually on target to have our best year yet still despite everything that has happened. And I truly believe that it is because we consistently post on social media and continue to post video out there and it's causing us to get that business back in our salon. We are very big on education in our salon and very big on posting. All of the stylists have their own personal pages and they post consistently on them. And we post very consistently on the salon page as well. And that to me, honestly, I think has made the biggest difference. And um, so with that being said, it's one of those things that you're just gonna have to learn if you want the business, if you want the new clients, then I highly suggest to get really good at social media. I know when we started our salon five and a half years ago, I literally would research and watch YouTube videos and just anything I could find to educate myself on how to become better at social media. And I look back to the first year we started to now and holy cow, my social media game has changed so much and is so different. Um, but don't ever look at anybody's social media or whatever and think that you need to be there now. All that matters is that you start. You start somewhere because everybody has to start somewhere. And so just start. Um, okay, 
So let me pull my Instagram app and I'm gonna show you guys specifically, specifically like how you can grow on Instagram. So we talked about stories, but also you wanna post consistently on social media. So I highly suggest to post at least once a day. If you can post two, maybe three times a day, then that's great too. Once a day is super great. Ten, if you can post 10 stories a day, that's amazing. So if you guys want to get new clients in your chair, um, you're gonna go to the search on, I'm on Instagram, this is the Instagram app. So hit the little search queue down there and then you're gonna go to the search at the top and then you're gonna see where it says tags, accounts, oh, top, and then it's gonna say accounts, then tags, then places. And you're gonna click tags and my local area is um, one of the places, like it's 30 minutes away, we get a lot of clients from this area, Roanoke, Virginia. So I'm gonna search underneath hashtag Roanoke, Virginia. And then I'm gonna scroll through and anybody who looks like a client that I would like to do, um, maybe they have that hair that's perfect for a foliage, balayage, or a certain service that I like to do, or maybe I think someone would be a good candidate for hair extensions, I'll reach out to them, just introduce myself, just a really nice friendly message, let them know, hey, I'm here, I do hair, you have beautiful hair, I would love to do your hair if you um, need a hairstylist, and whatever you wanna say, you can customize your message, just a really friendly hey, um, because you never know, maybe they're new to the area, maybe they're looking for a hairstylist, maybe they're looking for a new hairstylist, and maybe you just put that little bug in their ear. So if you have time, um, or I would highly suggest to make time, especially if you're a new stylist or you want to build up your clientele more, or like I said before, if you want to get specific clientele in your chair, which is what I have done. I started out taking any and every service that I could. When we opened our salon five and a half years ago, I was doing nails, I was doing men's cuts, women's cuts, and I was taking just any service that you can imagine. And I have niched my um, services down to just like specialty color, hand tied extensions, and just the big services. Blonding, foliage, foils, that type of thing. Um, I rarely do just a haircut or just a men's cut and I no longer do nails at all. And I've never been happier in my life. I do the services that I love. I have the clients in my chair that are very like-minded and I enjoy doing all the clients that I currently do now. And that's all thanks to social media and putting out what I wanted back to get back. So whatever you guys wanna be doing more of, make sure that's what you're posting. If you don't wanna do men's cuts, then don't post men's cuts. If you don't wanna do perms, don't post perms. Post those big dollar services. If you wanna be doing more balayages or foliages, or maybe you wanna be doing all men's cuts, maybe you wanna do just men or whatever it is, then post what you wanna be doing more of and you'll get it in your chair. It's crazy how it works, but it works. So anyways, you can search the hashtags. Also, if you go over to places, you can do the same exact thing and you can search anywhere in your area. So I'll just put in, um, let's see, Greensboro is a little far for me, but I'm just gonna like make it up. We'll do Greensboro, North Carolina. Okay, so I just typed in, hold on one second. Oh, I just exited out of it. Give me one second. Okay, so Actually, we'll just do Franklin County, there it is. Okay, so you just type in Franklin County under the locations and then start scrolling through and do the same thing. If you see anybody who you think would be a good client or they have pretty hair or whatever, just reach out, send them a friendly message. And I highly suggest sending out 10 messages a day and just letting, you'll be surprised over time. And even if they don't respond back to you, that's okay. Maybe they might start following you or maybe they might start stalking your page a little bit and then maybe weeks or months later they might kind of remember that message and be like, hey, what was that stylist again? Let me go check out her page. Um, it's amazing what happens when you're consistent with social media and doing different things like that. And then also, 
make sure when you are taking your pictures that they are super clear. And I will definitely be doing a video soon. And actually, I'm just gonna let you guys in on a little secret. I am working on a big project right now and I might be putting out some really awesome education um, that you guys can purchase. It's gonna be very detailed. I'm gonna have how to take pictures of your clients and specifically show you exactly how to do it. And I'm gonna be doing how to curl, different kind of curls for your clients to get those beautiful waves that you see all over Pinterest and everyone shows you. Um, and how to just get your feed looking aesthetically pleasing so that you can get more clients in your chair and start upping your game and looking like a awesome professional hairstylist and um, a hairstylist that will be in high demand. Also, I'm going to be showing my foliage techniques and all the good stuff, but stay tuned for that. So, let me show you... Where is that picture? Um, well, anyways, let me just pull up my feed. So, when you look at my feed, this is what it currently looks like. And I have changed it. I change it often. And if you scroll down further, you can see I had a lot of like the white backgrounds. Um, but currently I've been taking them more up front, our salon, where we have really good lighting coming in from the windows. And you can see it's just our products in the background, but they're a little bit blurred. Um, but that is kind of more the style now. It's just more organic, natural. Um, it's not like... So it's not like taking a picture in front of your station where you can see all the clutter and stuff, but it's just got like organ organized products behind it. So like something like that is okay versus something dark in the background like stations and messy stuff, the towels are thrown everywhere, the brushes are everywhere. That to me is not okay. Like nobody wants to see that. So just keep that in mind. Also, if you notice in my pictures, I take them up super, super close. The closer you can get your phone to the hair without cutting off anything. You don't want to cut off the top of their head. You don't want to cut off the bottom of their hair. But as close as you can without cutting anything off, that is the, to me, that gets the most clear and best hair picture that you can possibly get. When you take it back too far, it's, it takes away focus from the hair, but when you get it up super close like that, it just really makes your focus shift to the hair versus like, oh, it's okay. It kind of takes your picture from like, wow, versus if it's just back to like, oh, that's pretty, whatever. But when you take it up so close and it's like, wow, like that hair is gorgeous. So I'll scroll through and show you guys a couple more. So you guys can see hopefully what I mean. Like I take them really close, like close enough without cutting off the hair. That one's a video. So her head was cut off on that one. But anyways, okay. So I hope you guys found those tips helpful. Those were just a few little things. If you guys have any questions or anything that I left out that you would like me to hit on as far as social media or you have a question about an app or anything like that, please let me know in the comments below and I would I answer all my comments. I read all the comments. And again, if you guys aren't subscribed to this channel, definitely subscribe and give this video a thumbs up because I post new videos all the time and you guys don't want to miss out on all the education coming your way. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. I appreciate all of you guys. I love you all and I will see you in the next video.